not bad. <laughs> All right, so now I'll get back to my screen. And I'm gonna turn the volume down. You probably don't need to hear Green Acres. <laughs> so welcome everybody again, I'm Cindy Myers and we're, we're talking about animals and emotions today and pet vacations or your vacation love and what happens with our pets when we go on vacation. All right, so we're gonna share and select the right one, there we go. All right, here we go. So we're back to the, back to the front here. And so let's go right into the topic of vacation and pets. Let's get into that. So <clears throat> when, we, when we go out on trips, it definitely changes our pet's behavior. They can quite often, if you do it often, I know when I used to go on vacation or not vacation, when I traveled for my, my first job as an engineer and working for the Navy, I had to do a little bit of traveling back and forth, Washington and other places. And um, my dog at the time was a rescue dog. And he, that really upset him, me being gone, of course, it really pushed his buttons because he had been abandoned a couple of times. And so he would have a PTSD response and he was fine with the sitters and he had a good time with them. But when I came home, he acted out, he would have little anger issues and he <laughs> took them out mostly on my dress shoes. He would steal my dress shoes out of my closet or out of the suitcase and destroy them. <laughs> just dress shoes, not, not shoes that would, went for walks and jogs on beaches, just dress shoes. And so um, he would tell me that he was not happy with me, but he definitely had a lot of anxiety and it would take him uh, several days to kind of get back to himself. I could really tell he was out of sorts for several days. So our pets really have very strong emotions and if they're a rescue pet quite often that this really pushes their buttons. They too can have PTSD responses just like what we can have. And so, and, and it's hard for them to understand things because you know, English is definitely not their primary language. So we could tell them we're gonna be gone and we're gonna be back, but they also live quite in the moment. So us being gone is, is very unnerving to them. So what, so there's some of that anxiety is definitely can come out, uh, confusion. Uh, and so you'll probably see some behavioral and it can also create physical issues with them. Uh, I have a number of clients that they, their dogs have tummy issues during and after. A lot of them stop eating, um, have um, spent a lot of tummy issues, a lot of diarrhea afterwards. Uh, they can linger on and sometimes result in having to take them to a vet. Even they can get that sick right from the stress of this being gone. So that this can be a really serious problem. And of course, then it creates a lot of anxiety for us knowing that they are so anxious about us being gone. So <clears throat> what can we do? And how, how can we, well, what are some of the other signs that we know that our pets might be having stress issues you know we have the tummy issues but what what are some symptoms of anxiety panting is one of them now it could be also hot but if they're if it's just a comfortable temperature and everything's normal panting is a sign of anxiety um pacing if they can't find a comfortable place and they just go from room to room <laughs> or if they're like some of my dogs they could come even more velcro to me than even before so they're like so they don't want to leave, have me out of their sight for anything. You know, if I, if I get up to go, to, if, I change, <laughs> if I change my mind or forget where I'm going for, for and stop suddenly, which happens quite often, I get rear-ended. They're so close behind me. So that can be a, <clears throat> an indicator. And then chewing, chewing on themselves. A lot of stress can be chewing on their paws. Um, the cats too can be chewing or licking excessively. Um, so those are, can be indications that they're under a lot of stress and anxiety. They might bark more or mew um, more excessively than before. Um, also, and then not only um, uh, we talked about diarrhea a second ago, but perhaps they start having accidents in the house and that is abnormal if they're normally very good at using the litter box or going outside to do their business. And all of a sudden they're having accidents in the house 
that those two are indicators that they are under a lot of stress. So those are some things to look for if your pet is having anxiety either before or after your trip. And the good news is we can help them through all that because these are just, um, these are emotions. And what are emotions and how do these, our pets experience emotions? Well, you know what? They have emotions just like we do. We have emotions all day long, so do they. They just have a smaller vocabulary. You can think of um, our pets as having a vo an emotional vocabulary, kind of like a toddler. But if you have ever seen a toddler have a temper tantrum, they can have really strong emotions, right? And so is true with our, our pets. They can have really strong emotions, especially about us not being there and the change in their routine of us being gone. So those emotions can really impact them. <clears throat> And what emotions are, are just chemicals that our body creates to uh, express an experience we're having. And that's how I sense them. I, expect, I sense them as energy, really. I don't sense them, well, I can identify them by what emotions are trapped, but really I can sense them as a distortion of frequency. They get stuck in our bodies because again, they're chemicals and you can almost relate to them like food chemicals at that point. You know, if we eat so many, uh, we can eat so many calories in a day, right? And if we exceed what we can, what we should eat and what we can burn off in a day, those calories get stuck in our body, right? If we exceed that, the amount what, uh, what we should eat in a day. Well, so is true with our emotions because again, we're having them all day long that if we exceed or if we have really strong emotions, we can't burn those emotional chemicals off just like we can't burn off the food chemicals, then those chemicals have to go somewhere and they stay stuck in our bodies. And then they act like magnets and they, and they attract each similar emotions to that spot in our body, which can then create a weakness in our body and, it can, um, and then it creates the habits, usually the un undesirable habits, like, like the excessive chewing and the, the list that we just went over, right? That becomes the habit. So we want to release those and remove those trapped emotions, which is something that I, I know how to do, fortunately, and, and we can support your animal. And, and you can think of it too, and you know, we can have we can tolerate so many emotions in a day. We can even tolerate a fair number of trapped emotions. But what happens is there's like this threshold. And if we and these emotions build up, build up, build up, and we may not react we may not notice or have an adverse impact in our habits or their habits until we exceed this threshold. And now all of a sudden they have too many of these trapped emotions. They've got to get this energy out. And so it becomes something undesirable. It, our body breaks down. So their body starts reacting and they get sick, they get injured, or we have, um, um, or we have uh, behavior problems. They, they start having accidents in the house. That's because we've exceeded that threshold. So <clears throat> those are the things we wanna look for. And, and again, what we can do then is remove those trapped emotions. That will help then uh, alleviate the behavior because that's one thing with animals. Um, they, they do like to work with me in removing these trapped emotions because it feels so much better. And, that, and a lot of times that's enough to change the behavior right there. Or I can communicate with them too on what we do want them to do instead of what we don't want them to do, which is, you know, don't have an accident in the house. Yeah, I have to word it very carefully and reminding them we want them to go back outside. We want them to use the litter box, just a reminder of what we do want. And then it's working with you too. And so when they are doing the thing that we want them to do, lots of reward and praise. And that usually helps re modify the behavior. Um, so what should, let's talk about some things that you can do for them though. Is, yes, you wanna hopefully hire me to remove some of the trapped emotions or talk to the pets while you're out of town, but there's stuff you can do all the time for them on a day -to -day, daily basis that, that can be huge benefit. It actually is the most powerful thing there is for them. And so the first thing you can do is just breathe. <laughs> if you're with your pet, your home, and they're still having issues, one of the best things you can do for them is to slow your breathing down. They pick that up. They're really good. They've got a very good radar, you know, about our emotional state. You know, if we're sad, man, 
they're right there, right? They know our emotional state probably sometimes better than we do. So if we can slow our heart rate down, get our breathing going, just slow that breathing down, it really, they sense that and that calms them down. So getting our breathing slowed down is really important. Our words matter. Like I said, if, if I <laughs> if I communicate to them, I, I have to choose my words very carefully. I, I don't want to say, I choose not to say, don't have an accident in the house because <laughs> what they hear is, oh, I should have an accident in the house. They don't hear the negative. So I want to tell, tell them in a positive way exactly what we want them to do not what we don't want to do. We want them now to go outside. We want them to use their litter box. So it's all positive. It's also choosing words about, uh, in, in, uh, in say, instead of saying, don't be anxious, I'll be home. I want to tell them everything's, you know, it's time to have pe be peace and calm about it. It's okay. We're fine. You know, I will be home. Uh, it, it's choosing our word. Again, if I use the word anxiety, they, they hear that because we are tuning ourselves. Again, those are chemicals. So, oh, I said the word anxiety. My master chef in my brain says, oh, anxiety. I'm going to dump that in. Now I'm radiating out. I'm like a mini radar now. And I'm pumping out that emotion, that, that word that I just used. So that's not what I want them to pick up, right? I want them to feel comfortable and calm. So I'm going to say, oh, just be peace and calm about this. Right? Be calm, be calm. Now I'm releasing those chemicals of my brain says, oh, I know what that means, calm. So now it's releasing those chemicals and it's pushing those out as if, instead of the, the anxiety. Even if I use the word don't, I say, my master chef brain doesn't hear don't either. It just used the word anxiety and it's going to put it out. So I want to say peace and calm, if that's what I want them to have. I want them to be calm and relaxed. So think about the words that you use around your pets. And again, breathe slowly. And, and then what I also like to do is give them full attention. If, you know, we all like to multitask, we have a bazillion things going on. But if my pet is experiencing a little anxiety or upset, my golden, I don't know if you just saw her, she was right here a second ago. She gets really nervous in storms. So when she gets really frightened in storms, I, I try and stop if I can. I try and stop what I'm doing and give her full attention. Use my use the breathing. Do a lot of I do. Um, there's another technique or modality called T touch. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm not certified in it, but it's a wonderful mo modality, and it's just a really light touch. I encourage you all just just Google and get a YouTube of of T touch. And it's really relaxing. It's just so peaceful. And it's just a simple touch. And anybody can learn how to do it. It's so, so but it's that easy to do a basic T touch on an animal. And it's T T O U C H. And and this can help really get your pet calm very quickly. So I you I do that with my girl if she gets upset in storms. So I breathe, I use the right wording and and then I also do releases on her because I actually know how to do that. <laughs> so, but do you believe it or not, I forget half the time to do it on my own animals. <laughs> but we want to release those trapped emotions and then we can and then replace it with what we do want, which is calm. And this is one of the techniques. What this does is the T-touch that what that does is release the parasympathetic response system versus the anxiety, the, the, the adrenaline base, you know, the fight or flight response system. And that's what happens when, we, when our pets are in that anxious state. That is just their fight or flight response system. It's very reactionary. It's very, you know, what's in any of us, if we get pushed in, when we get triggered, we go right there and then our lizard brain takes over. And it's so true with them too. They are gonna have a response. It could be an aggressive response, barking, or, or maybe they run and try and hide or they freeze. You're in the headlight look, right? Those are one of the, usually one of the three responses that your pet's going to have if they get in a triggered state. One of the ways to get them out of it is, to, again, breathing, tea touch, peace and calm. Use those three things and you can help pull your pet out of it faster. You know, we can't always stop them from having it in the moment because that, that reactionary, that fight or flight is so fast. So we may not be able to prevent it from happening in the first place, but if we can get them out of it faster, if we can help them not have the tummy issues and, and chewing on their feet, all that list, long list of things, then that's, those are, that's what we want to do, okay? 
All right, so I'm gonna open it up to questions and see what you have. And I did see the call just now from somebody that was trying to get in. So it may give us a moment, pause us and see if we need any help. Um, but before I do that, let me talk, go over what I, how I can help you guys. Um, if you're going out of town, I have a service called Virtual Pet Sitting in which um, you get a 15 minute phone call so we can talk about your issues and, and get the dates exactly when you're gonna be gone because that's important put that in my calendar. And then I will check in on your pet uh, uh, several times while you're gone. If you're gone for the weekend, I can check on them the whole, you know, every day over the weekend. If you're gone a week, um, then I usually still check on them about three times. And depending on what their needs are, I usually check in on them or they, sometimes they reach out to me and ask me for support. So, um, but I will check on them regularly and just release any trapped emotions and anxiety they may have. And then usually, if you're gone a week, I usually wait till a day or two before and let them know when that you're about to come home. And I tell them and how many nighttime sleeps, because if I tell them, oh, you'll be home in two sleeps, they nap a lot. So they think you're gonna be home that day. <laughs> so so I, I, it's usually um, lunar or sun driven or meal driven, um, some an event driven that I let them know how how long it will be till you get home. And um, and then any other issues that might come up along the way. And it also, if you have noticed something like the day or two or right after, if you email me, I can usually clear something else afterwards. So um, it's really a good benefit. It helps reduce your anxiety. And if, depending on the person, on you, um, some, some like a email report of what I've done and other people, no, no news is good news. They're on vacation. They don't want to think about it. And that's fine. It's up to you if you want a, a report or not on what I've released or and communicated with your pet. And it also, if they have any, if your pet really <laughs> tells me something that's going on, I, I share that with you as well. All right. So if you have any questions on that, happy to um, share that with you. Some future events, there's no healing circle this Saturday. It's a long weekend, so I decided to take Saturday off. <laughs> um, but uh, next Wednesday, I decided to put it there instead. So next Wednesday evening, 6 p.m., I'm doing an online healing circle. Um, uh, you're welcome to come on that. Uh, and then the following Saturday, September 11th. Oh, that is a good day to have that one on anniversary. That's an important day. That's really a strong energy day. It could be a very powerful healing circle. So anybody that wants to experience that one, I would highly encourage the 11th to come on to that one. And then uh, and the next webinar will be September 15th and it's the human version. And we'll talk about, um, I'm not sure what the topic is yet on that one, but hop on to that one. And hopefully all the links will be working <laughs> better than it did today. And then um, more healing circles to follow up on the rest of the month. So just keep, a, you'll get emails on all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and looks like, uh, let me check as we, I know this one person was still trying to come in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording for a moment.